here's an, an incredible sight in Alice and it must have been an absolute amazing sight during peak COVID. Um, I'm sure you heard about a lot of the planes that were all grounded and they needed places to go. So uh, here in Alice, it was one of the um, ideal spots to park up planes um, because of the, uh, the environment, you know, the temperature conditions were ideal. It wouldn't um, get too much moisture and all that sort of stuff into componentry or electronics and things like that. So yeah, Jude's just taking some photos, um, hopefully um, without the obstruction of the fence and she's got a little bit better zoom that you can get up a bit closer. So I can see some Cafe Pacific logos um, and there's a Singapore um, airline one there. I think it, it looked like one of the, um, the Airbus um, what are they, A360s or something like that? I'm not too sure. It's one of the big ones, I think. Um, what else? What else was it? If you know what the um, the is it the yellow ones here? Drop a line in the comments. I can't imagine how many there were. Literally hundreds. Um, there's probably about 30 odd there now, I'd say. Um, and um, yeah, I think whoever owns the land did pretty well as a parking fee. <laughs> Another good place to come and visit while you're in um, Alice Springs. It's the Central Australian Aviation Museum, and uh, looks pretty interesting. So go and have a look at this one. There we go. Not too bad, eh? Nice cozy little class. And all that leg room there. And headroom. They're on DC3 Trans Australian Airline. How's this for a big bird crammed in this uh, hangar? Can't get over the old tail flaps here, man. They're huge. Australia's airline outback. Conair. Ooh. Really nice display. It's not a huge hangar, but man, they've got some uh, some items in here to see. Really well done, very impressive. Some for everything too, there's young uh, kids here doing some colouring and, and some interactive displays and things, so bring the kids, they'll love it. Right, well that was Hangar 1. Plenty to see him doing there. There's guys doing um, well, aircraft simulators, there's videos going there which you can watch. I uh, should also point out, heaps of parking, pretty sure you can swing two or three caravans into here. So uh, that was hangar number one, we're going to have a look at hangar number two. Carnelian, Carnelian Airways, let's see what that's got. How cool is that? Um, this site is the original Alice Springs Airport and the building is one of the early hangars. On the site in 1939, E.J. Cornelian, with only two planes and a mail service contract, established the first air service based in Central Australia. So the museum houses a fine collection of planes, aviation hardware, historic photos and documents, 
in the building to your right, a memorial to the Kookaburra and her crew. It tells the tragic story of two airmen who perished after making a forced landing in the Tanamai Desert. They were part of an air search organised to find Kingford Smith, who disappeared on the first leg of an around-the-world flight. Awesome. Awesome. Great little spot to come out. Man, I mean, doing all our tours around Australia, I mean, you see how the railway's done it tough and the, the gold people have done it tough and the roads and things like that. You know, it's, it's a desolate place out here. You kind of forget about the airmen that were out there, as I say, delivering mail, um, and of course with the flying doctors, uh, medical attention, supplies, all that sort of stuff. These guys, they're the cowboys of the year, you know, they ran on fumes um, late into the nights, early mornings and things, landed in places which there was nothing around and survived, so some great stories. So check out this uh, little air museum in Alice Springs, got a lot of great history. Who was huffing and puffing behind me? <laughs> <laughs> I said the camper van wouldn't make it up Anzac Hill and uh, lo and behold a big bus full of tourists just pulled up so mm, I'm gonna eat some humble pie aren't I? Yep. <laughs> but we're on top of Anzac Hill which is overlooking Alice Springs and uh, yeah what a great vantage point. Um, obviously Anzac Hill because it's uh, commemora commemorating so some of the soldiers that have uh, come before us, gone before us um, over in the distance, the McDonald Ranges, I believe the one goes off to the, uh, off to that side, that's the, uh, well let me get it, yeah it's the west side, because the sun's going over that way, and that's the east side going out that way. So, uh, nestled, I think they called it, uh, Jude might have told me about this one, uh, there was a, there was a, um, the town was relocated here in Half, Half Tree or something it's called, but it was pronounced a bit differently, um, from I'll try and find it sometime tomorrow, maybe. But up this way is um, Alice Springs, where the telegraph station was. So uh, hopefully I'll be able to dive into a little bit of the history from there. But uh, yeah, wicked, wicked little vantage point here at the top of the hill, Anzac Hill. I say we, we've got our van over by the river over there. Came for a nice walk up here. It's only a 200 metre walk uphill here. And um, yeah, spectacular view of them. Them hills in the town, nestled in this little area. We've got the Ross River. The Ross River, I believe, is just the other side of this uh, sports ground. And that absolutely goes hooning down through town, I bet, when there's a, a bit of rain. McDonald Ranges. When I was back in NZ with my parents, my dad was saying that he remembers reading a book. It was called The, the Mystery of Lassiter's find or something like that I think it is if Jude can find it she'll pop a little uh, little picture of it but um, Lassiter was a an explorer I believe and when he was um, crossing Australia around here somewhere I know that wind's probably gonna bother things around here somewhere he come across a quartz vein or something full of gold that was a mile long when, when you look at this country, when we've gone through the gap and we've been driving and um, it was Kings Canyon and all those sort of things, man, to be an adventure back then or a discoverer or whatever, just trying to find stuff like that. So uh, check it out. Here comes Brain Box. Well, I must admit, I did uh, do a little research on it, but I believe the flag above my head is the, uh, well, of course it's the Australian flag. Uh, the one on... Oh, just above my head there now, that one up there, yeah, that's the Aboriginal flag. And then I believe the one, where are you Dino? One just on the brim of my hat there, the blue. That is the Torres Strait Islander flag. And the one that might trip people up is that one there. Put that one down, Jude. Did you know that?
So here we are, John Flynn's grave, the historical site. Um, one thing I've got to uh, commend uh, Alice Springs about that I've noticed, you can see it behind me. The track, the walking track and the cycle track, they're amazing out here. Um, I did read that they had some uh, good tracks and I was actually quite interested about cycling out here because it's not all that far. We're going to head to the Simpson Gap, it's about 17 k's. And on a track like that, it'll just be so sweet. So uh, yeah, top effort out there, that looks pretty good. Um, here for another couple of days and I'd be really keen to probably just get the bikes out, especially on a nice day like this, and give it a bit of a blat. But anyway, let's see what I can tell you about the John Flynn Memorial. Uh, well, his gravesite, I do believe John Flynn is buried underneath that rock. His remains being cremated and put in an urn. And you have got to say that that is one of the most amazing grave sites you could have. I want to be buried under a rock looking at, I think it's Mount Glen. I'll check that one. We'll get you some more info. John Flynn, 1880 to 1951. In 1912, John Flynn was sent by the church to investigate the need of bushmen and women living in the Northern Territory. So he completed vast distances and found almost a complete lack of services that city people took for granted. Communication was slow and difficult. Illness and injury often proved fatal. So it aimed to set up the first flying doctor base in 1928 in Concurry. Its success prompted the establishment of the aerial medical services in other regions. Eventually, the church handed it over to the government, subsidised organisations, and so the Royal Flying Doctor Services was born. And John Flynn died in 1951 and is buried here by Mount Glillen. A man of great honour and achievements, his work was continued by the Royal Flying Doctor Service. So in 1952, a year after Flynn's death, a large round stone was transported from South Tennant Creek to be used as a marker for his grave. Wow, believe it or not, we made it into the main centre of Alice Springs. Some beautiful uh, artwork around. It's actually quite surprisingly nice town. Um, Jude and I are going to pop across the road here. Um, mega Fauna. Around this little museum about dinosaurs and things that roam the earth here many years ago so go and check it out um, there was a discovery made in 1950. Um, this this bloke here, I can't rem I can't pronounce his name, but it's uh, E Tala Kaka. He came across a bone, which he presumed was going to be a kangaroo bone, and he pulled it out of the ground. And hang on, that ain't no kangaroo. And from there, they have just been pulling bones and bones and bones out of this um, Akuta um, cattle station. Um, it's a big um, plot of land about 180 kilometers uh, northeast of Alice Springs and honestly yeah just the, uh, the fossils and um, the type of creatures even that you don't normally um, you know you don't see them in the Jurassic Park and things um, they look a lot like um, wombats or little bears um, obviously uh, other big ones like alligators back behind me, crocodiles or whatever they are um, and in here look at that we've got actually people working out the back here still uncovering and discovering what's in that huge area out the back now I'm gonna walk down this way and you'll see something that's still out of this world now I've been semi prepared for this because Jude who's in front of me right now hey Jude we saw these um, amazing creatures. Where was it? Mount Tessa. She's good. And I remember you said the name better than I could. But could you say it again? 
No. No. Uh, but but it's, it's amazing because, see, like, here's, here's a bird here, right? Yep. Um, you do that with your camera because you've already done that, eh? Okay. Um, but hang on, we've got back over here. Come and stand next door to this bird that we're about to see. Yes. Well, Jude's not going to do it. Look at the size of this crap. Okay, so I'm, I'm about 1.8. And this thing here, look at the head. It still towers. Yeah, you stand here by the head, Jude. And look at that. Towering over Jude. Okay, now let's go and see. <laughs> Get my camera back. Here we go. Let's go and see the real thing as it was feathered up. I mean, you swear it's coming out of something like a, uh, a cartoon. But that's one big bird. Massive bird. And then over this way, this was this thing that we saw in Mount Isa. Look up our Mount Isa issue. Look at this thing. And Jude, I hope you'll be able to pop a little photo of that one. But this is um, this is very much like a um, giant wombat. A wombat, yeah. And when it was found in the, the salt bush or the salt lake or whatever it was, it was well preserved. There was still the contents that were in its stomach and things. So, man, a really interesting little spot. Check out. I don't know whether it's the real egg or something, but. Anyway, it's a must see when you come to Alice Springs. It's beautiful. It's really well done. And the fact that they've got the little guy, uh, people, people out the back, they're still cleaning and guessing what these things are. Or they've got a pretty good idea when they've been able to put things like this together. And, uh, you must think what hot, dry sort of work it would be to grab those things. So this is a diprotodon. He can grow up to two meters tall and weigh approximately 2,700 kilograms. I found something new. These are actually not dodos. They're the demon duck of doom. They're actually ducks and they're meant to be four meters high. There is so much to see along these uh, West McDonald ranges. And we're only just down this bottom part. Alice Springs is down here, we're at Simpsons Gap right here. So it's a um, pretty staggering little uh, feature. And then the rest of it, um, Stanley's Chasms, um, Serpentine Gorge, the Ocra Pits, Ormiston Gorge. I mean, a lot of those all just, I know about love to go just I'm a bit scared with four-wheel driving and with the van and everything but uh, happy to try these ones out and do a little bit more in town so there's uh, obviously dingoes and rock wallabies some lizards so 20 minutes in and out go and have a look list I didn't think I'd get to. I thought places like this, you know, you know, four-wheel drive and she's dirt and rugged, but brilliant cruisy drive, short drive from Alice Springs and you're here in the Simpson Gap. And oh, it's nice and cool. Water all year round apparently and uh, oh, just a special place to be. So nice. I believe um, if you're lucky enough, and I'm not so lucky enough, blind as the back, can't see one, you get to see the odd rock wallaby hopping around some of those rocks up here and things but uh, there sure is a lovely spot
Pumped up the tyres, got a brief idea where I'm going to go. We did do Telegraph, and when I was out there, I saw a very nice coffee shop. So, it's 7Ks from here. Are you ready? Let's yep. go do it, eh? Look at this cute post box. This is the original Alice Springs post box. It's cleared at least twice a week. And once they are fixed with postage stamps, you can post your letters and postcards here. And they'll also receive our free souvenir franking stamp. Keep that in mind if you're out at Alice Springs. Telegraph station. Just checked out the details there at the little Rotun. I'm not going to go and do the uh, telegraph stations. I think it's about 16 bucks to go in there. And of course, I've done a couple of telegraph stations and I'll fill you in when I'm down at the. Uh, I'm trying to find Alice Springs, the watering hole. Um, so, back to town is about 2.9 or something on a, on a bike. Good little trail. I'm going to head on, on this one here. There's a trig walk up to a hill and then I'm going to branch off down into the um, river and see if I can find a little water source. I found that this water hole was named Alice Springs by the Overland Telegraph Surveyor WW Mills who found it on the 11th of March 1871 and named it after the wife of Charles Todd who was the Postmaster General and Superintendent of the Telegraphs. The water hole was known to the Aboriginals as Tuteria and it and the general area were important camping and ceremonial grounds of the Arunta tribe. Ooh -hoo. Well, welcome to the Alice Springs. <laughs> it's amazing. Come all this way. I mean, you, you envisage finding a, you know, a, a babbling brook or a spring sort of thing, but what this really was, was um, the Ross River here and the base down here we've got a bunch of impervious granite rock and uh, when you get the heavy rains or when this water's um, flowing as a river and then when it finally starts to dry out, these are the last sort of places that um, water will um, evaporate from. And uh, saw some photos there of um, you know people standing on this rock just diving into what would be like a a big swimming pool in here and I'm sure you're know, looking at the the scallop in the in the um, the riverbed here it would come up fair way so uh, and of course they would pump water from here up to the telegraph station over there and store some of it as well so yeah they catch as much as they can but at the moment this is a great water source obviously for you know kangaroos and dingoes and things like that they'll come into here I'm sure I can see um, stuff flapping around in the water so there's obviously maybe some little tadpoles and things i've seen birds come in and drink out of it too so yeah way back in was it 1871 onwards you know this was a a pretty important piece of water for for around this area it is beautiful it's nice especially when you've got some beautiful buildings like that of the um the uh, telegraph station see the uh the silver bellies or whatever it is that's flipping around out there 
There's actually quite a few, yeah. And they're a decent size as well. And they don't appear to be tadpoles. It's amazing they haven't succumbed to the birds. They're in quite shallow water, but I bet you they dart into the ditch there somewhere. Some are rising. So obviously Mills finds water in his discoveries. He thinks this is a good spot. They decide to build a telegraph station. The bloke in the telegraph station, I think his name was uh, Charles Todd. He was the general telegrapher. <laughs> his wife, his, her name, excuse me, flies. Her name was Alice. So they named it Alice Springs. So the springs fed tanks of water there and tanks of water just up here. And uh, they ran some 3,200 kilometers of wire from Adelaide through to Darwin. And at the time, they did it in two years. And that was a uh, engineering feat. It was one to be remembered. And uh, then from there it went underground, uh, went in the water and the sea and uh, connected Australia to the rest of the world. So, hell of a lot going on in this one little spot, eh? Hey? Pretty cool.